totally. With all of that, I did want to jump into monitoring here. I totally just went to the, what is it, Google's SRE book and the chapter on monitoring. And I've read the book before, and one of my favorite parts is that they describe monitoring as the base, that base level of, they kind of match it to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And they put, so they kind of create their own or whatever, and they put monitoring at the bottom. And I thought to myself, okay, monitoring is great. What is it? Why do I need to do this? Am I going to sit and look at a dashboard all day? Do I need to get alerted for this? How how are alerts going to work? What do I need to get alerted on? I was thinking about this at work. I was thinking about this just in a home, like you have your home lab environment. I've been thinking, I wonder if he has a dashboard that he just pulls up and he's like, oh yeah. I've got this stuff going wrong. Uh, it looks like, you know, 80 million different pings and people trying to pen test me and my home network. What does this look like? Do I Am I even aware of it, right? And those questions started coming to mind. I started thinking about it. I'm like, okay, let me do it. Uh, let me look into logging, monitoring, all of this fun stuff for a little bit and see what I can come up with. Um, so I have all these great notes here. You can check them out. I'm really just going to link the page to the uh, SRE book, but essentially what it boiled down to, uh, what I took away, there were kind of a handful of main points, uh, what monitoring is. So I'm just going to read the the freaking definition here. Uh, Collecting, processing, aggregating, and displaying. I don't like that displaying word. Real-time quantitative data about a system, such as query counts and types, error counts and types, processing times and server lifetimes. Fine. That's all great. I love all of that. I don't know about displaying if that should be included in the definition of monitoring. I, I who sits what, in, what in this, in the rest of your notes here uh, would, would indicate that mon- or displaying may not be worth being in that definition. I, and this is what I think of when you say display that means it's up on a board, right? People are looking at it. Maybe it's a knock. Maybe it's sock. Maybe, you know, maybe who, whoever it is, is looking at a board, just watching their computer. And they're looking at dashboards saying, all right, well, it looks like we're starting to have errors on X or Y service. Like, okay, that's great. We didn't need you to sit here and watch a dashboard. We could have made a smart metric to say, all right, ping whoever, ping the application owner when there's an issue starting to happen or when we see issues starting to happen. And that's what I don't like about that display word. Collecting, great. Processing, yes. I think all the data has to be processed, right? Aggregating, it's got to be in one place. If you're looking at a snapshot of a knock, I would agree. I would I, I would it, I would say yes. If, if you're smart enough to have a green light turn red when something happens, you're smart enough to have an alert sent about that light to having turned whoever, red. Exactly, right? Yeah. Now, there is obviously the one extra piece of, you know, especially in that kind of environment, it is up there for everyone to see, whereas you never know if someone's going to be checking their email that exact moment. Um, the other thing is... As you are dealing with outages, um, outages that you may even not have been aware of before, like outages that you haven't seen before, outages that, you know, errors that, that you hadn't run into before, right? You can start looking at, and this is, you know, you could display things intelligently. You can display things in a historic type manner. You can see, oh, it looks like every day around midnight we dumped a whole bunch of RAM for no good reason, and then it started creeping up again, right? And it could have been that the process was restarting itself over and over, and that's not something that that you caught before. But in displaying the, that data about the system, you can start to, to see a, a pattern rather than me having to go through SAR data and collect Look a whole bunch and, of – yeah. yeah. Yeah, stuff about, you know, what was the RAM and put it into a graph manually. Let's let's be preemptive and, and get our own graphs. Have it there. And that's what you think the yeah. benefit of having that display part is. You're able to look at it cyclically and be like, all right, well, this happened last night at midnight and it looks like it happened today. There was a spike again today at midnight. 
now I can start to visualize is, it. Is is definitely a way that you can look at it. Also, you know, you can't alert on stuff that you don't know about yet. Well, and that's a great point. But how are you going to monitor on that? Right? What does that look like? You can't. For right? instance, for instance, right? If we know that there is a possibility that a socket, like the commands receivable socket, could go down. Um, we would be monitoring that socket, right? Okay. Because that's that's a potential right. for failure, right? That's right. a that's a right. failure point, right? So, if it's if it's up, then we're green. If it's down, then we're red, right? The what we're doing there is we're we're identifying a root cause which could exhibit itself in a number of symptoms. Okay. Right, and that that is an intelligent uh, thing to thing to track right it's probably not going to be something i display right but if i see that something's going all wonky and that i got an alert about the the socket socket going down right then i can say let's fix the socket first and then see if that brings everything back to normal still going if it doesn't bring everything back to normal then we say okay something's we really got a problem now yeah 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 maybe like while it was running you know one of the bind mount points got double mounted or you know Something, yeah, yeah something. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know, um, but, but having that, having that data in there, um, especially just symptomatic data, just like something, something, something's weird about this, and, and that's a lot of RAM, CPU, disk, you know, the, the basics, but you can, you can see, a hey, that's returned to normal. Now you can say, all right, well. Sure, but why not just put like an AI on it so it can establish a baseline and then sure, tell you sure. when it's gone back to normal, and 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 at that point I just throw my hands up and walk out of the room because I'm like, how much money and time do you think we have? You know, development power. I mean, we only have so much. It's it's a lot simpler to put stuff on a freaking graph and go look at it than to develop then, an artificial intelligence to do analysis to monitor it, right? <laughs> The AI, well, we didn't think it was broken. It didn't look that broken. <laughs> but that brings it to a great point, though. And that's the, uh, you've been talking a lot about the symptom versus the cause, right? And that's something they mentioned in the book or in that chapter, I should say, is, all right, what's the symptom? It's like, we're getting 500s. Okay, that's great. Your web app isn't working. It's That's just a symptom, right, of the problem. The cause could be, well, our database crashed or... We ran out of disk. We ran out of disk space. So it's like, why can't I, I? The error. I can't upload anything else to Nextcloud. What's going on? Oh, it looks like block storage just completely filled on the instance. That's that would be the cause. So they did mention a lot of that, um, and then they went into some benefits of monitoring and the four golden. They put their four golden signals out there. I absolutely. I. I don't know what you think on these four signals. I love them. I'm going to read them out here just so everyone's aware okay. of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Latency, uh, the time it takes a service to service a request. Traffic is a measure of how much demand is being placed on a system measured in high level system specific, like a system specific metric. Uh, errors, which is the rate of requests that fail, either explicitly, implicitly, or by policy. This could mean, you know, we want to serve requests at the rate of. I'm going to make up something dumb. Don't ju- don't judge it. One, We're going to serve one per second. We're going to serve one request per second. That's sure. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. But, you know, if it say you're serving one request per every two seconds, well, that's an error, right? That's showing up as an error. And then the last one here is saturation. How full your service is. And this one, this one kind of, when, when I think of this one, it, it immediately drives me down to, physical like how much ram are we using right how much is the jvm using that i i think i go to java apps but how much is how much ram is a jvm using is it you know because those things can just get blown out of proportion right and it, it what's what's why is there saturation is it requests not being fulfilled is there something else going on but those are the four i like all of them now i think monitoring for all of them is difficult i think i i'm kind of like a it reminds me of the triangle uh what is it fast good and cheap or you know so it's like p 
pick pick two and you're going to struggle on the other. It's like, well, here are four, pick two. That's kind of what I think. So I immediately jump to errors, right? Yeah. And then I jump to usually traffic isn't a big one, but I do like latency, right? Because that's, that's what people notice. How fast is this thing coming to me? How, how am I, how, how is this getting delivered? Is, you know, do I have to wait? Do I have to sit here and actually watch the page load? And I have had that on some portal page, you know, when I'm trying to load three megs of JavaScript across the uh, internet on my local host. I'm just like, what is going on? I'm like, oh, I'm trying to bring in every dependency and its mother on a single page. I would say oh. probably the two easiest to get started with, however, are going to be errors and saturation. Because it's really easy to test for an error, and it's really easy to test for Unix metrics because we've been doing that forever. Totally. Right? But traffic is going to be system-specific, as it says here, and and latency is going to be as well. It's going gonna, it's gonna to require more complex infrastructure, testing infrastructure to be set up for that, um, as well as more intelligent tests and, and evaluation of those tests. Especially in terms of monitoring, too. Yeah. But... Right. Setting it... it I agree. Setting it up is can be difficult but nginx i feel like does provide a pretty good job with our logs those can be analyzed now that's not real time per se that's a, i think a different story um well and i would and say I it's not monitoring right it's it's logging you you can it, go back and look correct. at logs and you can say all right well this is what it was for the past week but monitoring gives you that real time right yep we get alert we get disk alerts from DigitalOcean, which i think are great right we get hey the socket's broken right now we're going to auto trying to run an auto fix that's great i i would call that i would call those monitoring i would not call us going back and looking at hey you know how long did it take this page to load for portal or how long does it take command center front page to load yeah because i have I can, gone in and looked at I that can, but it's not real time I, I was i was just thinking yeah i can i can track the socket now to see if it if it falls over we can do a restart of it because what I've been doing with the reboot thing, but that's next episode. We can we can talk about that next episode. Yeah. What do you What are you wrapping up here with with monitoring? The one thing I wanted to wrap up with, uh, and I love it. It's from them as well. It's uh, piling requirements on top of each other <laughs> can add up to a very mm. complex system, right? Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I didn't hear that. Can you say that one more time? <laughs> piling. <laughs> requirements on top of each other can add up to a very complex system so, it. <laughs> uh and i love that they include this for mon for monitoring right for a monitoring solution yeah and you don't even think about it you just think all right well i'm supposed to get the alert when this happens or you know these are these if this criteria is met um, this is supposed to happen whatever and you then, don't think about you know, it you have an incident and then you have that feedback loop where someone gets blamed for the incident and they're they they turn around and say well if only that had been monitored and yeah right then you right. get a task out of that saying how did this become my fault yes exactly so that was the one thing i wanted to end on it's like like all software systems, monitoring can become so complex that it's fragile. And this is what I also want to get back to, was that, think about it now, we have Docker monitoring, right? We have health checks that run milliseconds, seconds, run every five seconds. We have it now that it used to be, it would just run compositional role on everything, the entire instance, and it would just kind of blow it away for yep. three to five minutes. But now we're kind of moving into that stage where it's, Hey, portal saying that one service went bad, right? You know, maybe one service is having issues. Maybe a run deck is having issues. Now, instead of blowing away the entire instance for three to five minutes, killing whoever is on there, now we're just able to say, hey, look, this is isolated. We don't have to run it on our entire instance. We can just run it against the one service. And so I'm excited to see what we have coming for going forward. But that was really uh, kind of where I wanted to bring it home was with the uh, movement towards 4.0 and just being able to restart basically one service at a time now. Yeah, no, you you hit the, the nail right on the head there. I mean, that is that is the way that we serve the people who are actually using the product. And, and also, that's me. I'm, I'm using it too, so I'm serving. It's self-serving if you really want to, you know, straw man me. But, 
yeah the 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 uh, efficiencies that that continue to to come out here right the the way this continues to get better the way we you know are able to to integrate feedback and 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 keep polishing this product um are are things that we are committed to right and and that we're we're going to keep doing i mean this this allows me and and you know we didn't really touch on it in, in monitoring but i mean the end point of monitoring is that i don't have to look at a display and and that's also where right. you get your hang up there too right i can go out and i can have my day at the park you know if i want i can have my lazy sunday i can go play frisbee golf right and and not have to worry uh, about stuff like this right so so that's the ecosystem that we're looking to provide. And if, if uh, anyone out there is, is looking for that too, if you're looking for that kind of peace of mind, if you're looking for that, Hey, I just need stuff that works. Uh, hop aboard the train. I mean, we're, we're going full steam ahead here. Um, go to rcompose.com, right? Sign up, sign up for the mailing list. You're, you're going to ha- see a lot of, a lot of big things coming down the pipe there. Um, so super excited for that. And, uh, and, and everything that we, we've really already done. Um, and, and, uh, yeah, don't, don't be late. Don't, don't snooze on this. Don't sleep on this. Anyways, my rambling aside, we hope you enjoyed this episode of our Composecast. Thank you. Be safe. And we'll see you all in two weeks. Bye everybody.